I think he is. And that is so beautiful to see. Like, because Serral? Okay, yeah. I Is he sending the SUV to block the third oh, here? Oh, no. Oh, no. You know, if they if he is a practice partner of Serral, and Serral knew how... Okay, okay. At least he's going to the natural here by the looks of it. And upon not seeing a, a hatchery there, it's like, uh, okay, what are you doing to me? Okay, the Reaper immediately starts going home, and it's like, okay, okay, what could this be? Where are the units going to come from? Because he needs to find out what's happening pretty soon. Reaper is going to find the creep immediately, so he knows where the hatchery is located as well. Bunker is going up. The bunker is pretty far away from the ramp. How do you feel about that, Ben? I, I, I would have had it a little bit closer to the wall, and yeah, that seems to be what he's doing now, just because... After seeing the gases and seeing what you're up against, you're, you're up against Ravages. I do like that he made a tech lab with the barracks, because now I think he's just going to switch it. Loses an SV against this Zergling. Is he going to be able to get up a command center? He should be able to, right? Yes, yeah, it's like 99% done. So he's going to be okay with that. Can probably morph it into an orbital immediately as well, and then just kind of float it over into his main base. So at least we're going to have some scans available, and of course two mules as well. Now... Sparrow eventually is probably going to expand on his side of the map because I'm not sure if he really can bust Thor here. Thor is uh, this, yeah, this is getting ridiculously low. Okay. And he had to stop that orbital command switching. The cyclone choice, by the way, instead of the tank, I like that as well. It allows you to be mobile, you don't get stuck. And cyclones do deal with ravages pretty well as long as they don't get uh, caught off guard. Needs to move the SUVs there. Oh my goodness, that was awfully close. Let's get the second lock on there. Gets a lot of shots on that Ravager. Actually takes it all the way down. Because the Reaper provided vision there for that lock on to stay active. So that's all right. I mean, obviously losing a couple of SUVs. But hey, picking up the first Ravager that quickly is pretty sweet. I I'm liking this more and more as time goes on for Soul. Um, primarily because on maps that I've seen Serral do this on before, like it was on Automaton. He could at least mine from like a gold base or wherever he made the hatchery. Whereas now, how do you mine from that hatchery that he has? Like mm. the Terran base is above you. Yep, that's probably not going to be the play. It is important for Soul to eventually secure low ground though. And there's a chance there's going to be creep everywhere as well. Good transfuse there by Cero. I kind of like it actually with the two queens here. They're going to gather up a little bit of energy as well. And this is starting to look pretty good to me. Wait, was Soul's answer to this to go for double factory? Aha, uh -huh, it is. Okay. Very interesting choice. Didn't he even start MacField Accelerator on the tech lab that got blown up? Or am I uh, crazy? I mean, he might have done. It doesn't really help against the Ravages or the Queens, but it would help against the Rogers. And it, I mean, it's an upgrade that you need in the long run. But this... I, I know I said I started liking it more and more for Soul, but oh, these transfusions are beautiful. And yeah, this is going to go on for quite some time. And his barracks is taking a serious beating as well. The barracks was there to provide vision. That vision is gone now. Serral saves another Ravager. Are you kidding me? Okay, well, at this point, I feel like it's really awkward for Saul. Yes, he's on 33 uh, workers, but that's obviously massive oversaturation in his main base. He can pull some SCVs to repair. But he's going to be forced to scan a couple of times as well to clean up the creep in the natural. And at this point, Saro's uh, own natural on his side of the map is actually up and running. He also has a little bit of additional income from his proxy hatch, as Mapu showed us. Yeah, this is starting to look better and better for Yona. Okay, I do, I do love the Cyclones locking onto one unit at a time. I know that that may seem counterproductive, like, oh, but he can tr just transfuse it. But now he's actually getting kills. Loses one Cyclone in return, though. I mean, and a feels... tank's being produced, another barracks is being produced. It's a very weird way to start this best of three. I did not necessarily expect this attack to come out of uh, Serral, but I kind of like the way he's been doing it. There, does, there is a scan, but one creep tumor did survive, and that's kind of what I was worried about for Soul. So he's going to be forced to scan again. And it's just, it feels like this is taking a very long time. We're almost six minutes and 30 seconds into this game. And Sol still did not secure his natural. Well, Serral is already going up to three bases on his side of the map. Final scan will take down of that one creep tumor, but he doesn't get the <laughs> other one. Oh, no, Ben. That means one that more scan is going to be needed. Now, couple of cross and piles take care of the tank, too. Serral, with the longest rush ever, is getting so much value out of his opening. It does look like he'll be able to clean up all these roaches and ravag or the ravages, which is definitely decent. He'll be able to secure this natural, most likely. And Sol is ahead in supply. 
And 42 SCVs he made on this kind of one base situation. So as soon as it's up, boom, he's going to be mining so much with this. Like, this is obviously a really, really weird situation to be in for both of them. A Raven might not be a bad idea, and unbeknownst to Soul, it'll be a really good idea against these burrowed roaches, which is the tech of choice for Serral. And is that because he thinks he's going to be against pure cyclone mech, like unburrowing on all the cyclones? Maybe for some run buys as well later on, just to pop yeah. up in all these mineral lines. I mean, Saw is getting into bio, actually. It's just very late bio, right? And yeah. <laughs> uh, that's, it's a little bit of everything. I mean, we have seen a couple of Battle Mac openers in the past going into bio. This is not full out Battle Mac because we never did get Mac Field Accelerator. I mean, <laughs> what a way to start this best of three. Yeah, I, like, it's baffling, right? Like, Serral's going to be ahead in upgrades for his Roaches and, ra like, Ravages and what have you. Um, his main base is kind of nearing mining out, but, oh, Sol's main base must be really close to mining out, right, with how many mules he had to drop? Yeah, uh, yeah nine, minutes, nine minutes in, and uh, even one of the big mineral patches is pretty much about to disappear. Serral has 66 army supply at this point, and I think he's just going to try to be annoying, land a couple of cross balls in this mineral line as the battle mech units are a bit out of position. Stim is obviously not done yet. This is not where Sol wants to be losing SCVs, but Ben, I think he's about to start losing some SCVs. Oh, definitely. And these burrowed roaches, they do... Oh, actually, Sol reacted very, very quickly there, even getting up the turrets as well. Well, this orbital is taking a lot of damage. Corrosive Ball does not take it down yet, but the next wave of Corrosive Balls can potentially get it down. Stoll does an amazing job at keeping the orbital alive, though. And Serral does get a few tanks, gets more than a handful of SCVs, as 11 have gone down already, and further slows down the economy of Stoll. Uh, oh. Serral is so good at buying time with everything he does. Yeah, like every, every time you watch his units move, you know they're going to be doing the right thing. Like all the corrosive vials landed in all the right places, just enough uh, to kill the tanks. He did such a good job in keeping his orbital alive before, but the next wave of corrosive vials can potentially be very troublesome. As oh! well, actually, Serral just kind of runs into his own corrosive vials, but he does take care of that tank. The Marines don't have the upgrades yet that they're looking for, and so is going to be forced to tap. Hey, that's a super Warren. early Roach Warren, isn't it? It's very early, yes. Wow, does Jonah just not want to give us these long macro games that we're hoping for? What is happening here as the Reaper now goes down to the Zerglings as well, which means that all of this is going to be a little harder to scout for Soul. He is sending out his first two Hellions. And they're going to try to uh, get some info, but normally these Hellions just cruising around, make sure nothing weird is up. They don't really want to dive into the natural and spot the Roach Warren. Fusion Core now goes down on the side of Soul as well. Now, battle cruisers are cool and all, Ben, but they take a very long time to build, and I'm afraid that Serral doesn't want to wait that long. I love that Serral's selling this as if he's like still super all in, you know, warp morphing in the ravages, and a lot of players wouldn't have done that, but still trying to utilize this push to any degree that he can. But Soul, he must be feeling like, mm, there's something a bit off here. Like, where are the Lings? Where are the rest of the units? But that Banshee was absolutely the right call. <laughs> couple of crossing balls with Rob there, hoping to get a surprise snipe on that Banshee, but Sol is paying attention. Sol also has a nice bunker in the back of his main uh, natural, and that makes it very hard for Zerglings to run in there and really get much damage done. On top of that, the ramp is very well protected. So after that Banshee, we are still going to go into battle cruises. Economically, Sol is starting to fall a little behind, but it's not all that bad because he does have triple orbital already. Queen count is currently five on the other side of the map, so if they're not near a spore crawler, it can get a little bit dicey. Battlecruiser jumps in the back of the main base, Serral reacts immediately by sending those overlords away. This BC, though, should still be able to find some success. It's gonna settle for drone kills for now. We can already see four drones go down, fifth one goes down as well, gets the sixth, and will get out of there. Not a bad start for Sword. At the same time, all the Hellions are gonna try to get lucky on the right side but they will be met by roaches and ravages. Actually, this isn't bad for Soul at all. Like, if we look at the work accounts and stuff, he's actually in a pretty decent spot. And what's his, like, base situation? Is he just on three CCs right now? or? And how do you feel about the muters instead of corruptors to deal with this? I think, I think that's he just a... wants, wants to play Muta Link Bane against Mech. That's kind of where I was going before. Like, 
At first, this was always almost always a no-go, but it feels like Sue showed us the way, where it's like, no, you can actually beat Mech with Mila Ling Bay. Mila's will jump up the battle cruise, and then don't forget, Sarah was going to take my favorite base, man. The base with the two rich Vespian guys. And that is going to help your Muta Baneling play a lot. The amount of extra gas, it's like having two bases worth, you know? So that will absolutely come into play. And man, this Muta flock, it's going to grow very quickly, very soon. And already these Mutas are actually dealing quite a bit of damage. Yep, a couple of Yamatas are going to be annoying. So is still building battle cruises, and then it makes me extra sad that he just lost one that had everything to do with the fact that it was so low on HP already after it jumped above those queens and spores. And Saros gas income is going to be crazy, man. Like one rich Vespian geyser is already like, ah, oh, that's so nice. You know, you save a couple of workers. Having two of them is crazy. And that will also allow his army to be a little bit bigger than it normally is. Because you don't need the same amount of workers as you normally do in a game like this. But hey, stores are out. And we know how these fights can go. Man, Saros going up to 96 drones. What the hell? I, I really like that number. Like, so he's going to go up to maybe around 100-ish drones. And he's just going to look to trade, trade, trade and keep the Terran army small while he just takes over the entire map. And I think that's absolutely the way to go up against this. What I love as well is that he is already working towards missile attacks. So eventually we could see roaches, we could see hydras if the time is right, if he really just needs that. We even see a couple of roaches being produced already. I'm. It's still going to be kind of tough to bust soul, I feel, but his yeah. economy has been untouched, like uh, Cero's economy, I mean. The good news for Cero is that he doesn't need to do it in one wave, right? He can do no. it slowly but steady. He can take a couple of very bad fights with the economy as and still get away with it. I like a couple of Ravages here. They're going to try to drop across the balls of the tanks, but this might not be the attack that Cero was looking for. But he gets a couple of tanks, a couple of Hellions. Not maybe the best way to do it. As we see the Mutas dive on top of the battle cruisers. Well, I guess if you have these amount of Mutas, you can actually get away with something like this. That's kind of cool. Yeah, I gotta say, if you look at the units lost resource tab, it's actually awfully close at this yeah. point, which I'm very surprised by because it felt like a couple of those attacks were like, yeah, okay, not the prettiest, but it doesn't really matter. Like, no, it's actually still very close. And this time the third actually feels super exposed. The VCs already jumped away, so they are not here to help out either. They're gonna try to fly back, but they're a little bit slow. The bailing count is so high, Ben. Where are the Hellions? There are no Hellions on the map. And that means that these bailings are having a fantastic time just rolling around and blowing up as many SCVs as they can possibly find. And I mean, the supplies, they got kind of close for a moment there, but the bank is there for Serral. He's getting every upgrade he can afford here. More static defense as well at his peripheral bases. Sol's work account down to 52 versus 95 drones. Serral <laughs> is showing us how to... Oh! I mean, even if he loses all of those, he's got such a bank he can just replenish. Yep, within a minute, they'll be back pretty much. Yeah, uh, I would love to even see Saro just for fun at this point. Take the other base. Yes, he's sending out the drone indeed. <laughs> Take those rich Vespian guys as well. That's why I love Yona. I think of things and he's like, don't worry, I got you. <laughs> I, I think that's one of the things that resonates with a lot of players, though. Like, you can watch players and be like, oh, why doesn't he do this? Why doesn't he do that? Yeah. Um, um, um. <laughs> but yeah, every everything that is a good move, he does it. Yep. Munoz are going to try to find some more openings here, and they will. That sends it out, won't go up. The missile turret is going to try to be repaired and actually does kind of stay alive. The BC count is getting decent, but as Mapu showed us already, double spire is on the way, and Saro is going to be able to make an insane amount of corruptors. However, yeah, and obviously infestors as well, as we see Neural Parasite and. I don't think that Cero is going to have a gas problem this game. So <laughs> getting a couple of infestors to help out the corruptors and stuff shouldn't be too much of an issue either. Would you like to see soldiers go YOLO and jump to BCs to the other side of the map and try to do something crazy? Um, I mean, at this point, he's just getting picked apart slowly. And I think he knows it. Like the war of attrition, even though we can potentially keep holding on, what is the end goal here? Like his opponent's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Like. He had to do something, but I think it was a while ago. So the fact that he's kind of let himself get into this position, but also the fact that Serral's got himself into this position of just being so rich. Like, it, it, if, if you had to do something as a Terran, it was a while ago, because <laughs> having both rich Vespain geyser bases on this map, again, Kevin, that gas income is just skyrocketing. Yep. 2.5k? 
<laughs> Saros is having a very good time. Saros actually mining more gas right now than he's mining minerals. How often do you see that, guys? More gas income than mineral income. This is pretty much insane. He's oh. going to be able to make whatever the hell he wants. Even he did the a little trick. Yeah, he did the supply trick. So we're looking at a 205 supply. Saros, he's breaking the game as we speak. So is finally going to try to take that very difficult fifth base that I mentioned, which is so hard to secure. And this obviously leaves him very vulnerable. Serral is going to pounce on his army immediately. There aren't that many Zerglings. The BCs will show up. And they'll kind of save the day for now. But the tank count ban pretty much completely reset. I tell you what, though. That was like the best fight that Soul could possibly take. And... Oh no, Ben! Don't get hopeful now. No, no, no! I'm gonna stop you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the bank, the bank is kind of gone, and oh, that's one of his rich Vespain gases uh, bases going down. But I just looked to get on the map. Serral's taking the other one on the far east side. <laughs> oh, he has the whole map, Kevin. Yeah, I think no. Obviously, that fight cost efficiency is kind of good, but a lot of these mech units are now pretty beat up. This also means that this base is now very exposed. The mech army is small. There are no leftover tanks. There are no Hellions to save the day here against Zerglings and Bailings. More SCVs will go down at this point. Serral has already killed 80 SCVs, Ben. 80 against mech. Oh, and like there's fights going on absolutely everywhere, and the mech is cost efficient, I know, but. Serral is trading with it with just pure, pure Ling Bane Corruptor and GG.